and we're live. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Hello, David. Hi, Tim. And I have really exciting news. I'm on this same time zone as Tim and David, which is normally not the case. Normally, I'm specific standard time. So, hi, everyone in this uh, UK time zone. <laughs> yeah, you're thinking the pure horror of the darkness. It's four o'clock in the UK. It's already and dark outside. It no, is. Well, you know this, but... <laughs> anyway, the amazing guest we have this week, starting off the new season, given that we I, we were not doing shows because I was in the US for a few weeks. Starting off the new season, even though I kind of think we might not have a show next week either, but that's a whole other thing. We have David <laughs> Wiving, Wivington, or is it Wivington? Wivington, that's pronounced, who, according to his LinkedIn, is a cruise ship enrichment guest speaker, um, which I kind of was a great way of describing what you do but for anybody who doesn't know what a cruise ship enrichment guest speaker is could you say a little bit about what it, what you actually do what do i do um yeah. as little as possible you know yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so um so i go on cruise ships and and i i do talks you know 45 minute talks lectures that sort of thing um and my particular topic is what i've called tech it easy yeah um little play on words but basically i simplify technology it's simply about everyday tech techie stuff it's for people that say i don't do technology or feel technology is left them behind so i simplify it make it interesting make it fun and give them confidence to uh, to use technology every day what are some of the biggest obstacles to tech that you found that people have what are they what are they most uncomfortable with when it comes to tech um most people uh think well i can't do technology it's too complicated it's left me behind you know i'm not into it i don't understand it you know, I don't even know how to switch on a computer. So, so we start right at the beginning with each each session. I, I like just to start right at the beginning and then dig a bit deeper. So it gives people confidence. So yeah, that's the, the, those sort of things generally. Is uh, I don't know how to do this or how do you do that? You know what I mean? Those sort of things. I so this is what I've been doing. I'm noticing. So my boys are older and in recent days I have a I have 20 something and a late teenager and I literally call them to help me with my tech now. I and I'm feeling <laughs> I'm beginning to feel like I'm doing what my parents used to do. I can't do this. <laughs> are you getting those phone calls David or have you noticed that's kind of a trend? <laughs> um yeah I, I do sometimes get you know get phone calls from people how do you do this or how do you do that mm. which, which i love i enjoy you know if you can help somebody to do something and even if i don't know it, it's it's a challenge to find yeah. out so that you can then simplify it to help them so i love those sort of things those sort of challenges so presumably you didn't just buy a cruise ticket and then just jump on a stage somewhere unannounced. <laughs> uh, somehow you got invited to, to give these talks on to cruise ship. So talk a little bit about how you got from the process of, because did you have the Tech It Easy brand before you did the cruise ship stuff? And you kind of, so talk a little bit about how you got to be a cruise ship enrichment guest speaker. <laughs> right. Well, um, my wife and I went on our very first cruise back in 2012. Yeah. Um, about five or six years before, my wife said to me, you know, it's going to be our silver wedding anniversary. Yeah. Um, I want to go on a cruise. And I thought, that's going to be expensive. <laughs> then she said, I want a nice posh cabin with a balcony. And I thought, that's going to be very expensive. <laughs> so I'd been fed into a little savings fund and, you know, then we decided, okay, we'll go on a cruise. Knew nothing about cruises yeah. so at that point in time. So um, anyway, booked a cruise, fell in love with going on cruises and went on another one and another one. 
Um, fast forward, I, I took a few years ago, I took early retirement. And one of the things I wanted to do was simplify techie stuff for people because I, I realized some people thought technology had left them behind. And, yeah. and I thought, wouldn't it be great if we can create a community group just for those people? Uh, just to simplify techie stuff, answer questions, have a different topic every week, every month. So that's what I did. And so I've, I've, I've run that in association with our local church who run community groups. And I've run it once, once a month, apart from during COVID, of course, during the lockdown. And as time went on, I'd, I'd created all these different, different topics. And I thought, I wonder if cruise ships would be interested in, uh, in some of these. And um, I've got a friend who's uh, a cruise ship um, enrichment guest speaker. So I asked him and uh, he gave me some, some contacts, got in touch with them. And through that, I got my first, um, first appointment my first engagement, first yeah. whatever you want to call it. And then uh, that started the ball rolling. Do you do it in a question and answer format? Do you do you lecture and let people ask questions? Or what is the format on the cruise ship in these workshops? On the cruise ship, it depends whether it's done as a lecture, a 45-minute lecture, or as a workshop. If it's a, a lecture from, from the stage, then it's difficult to do Q and A, mm -hmm. but quite often afterwards, people will come up to me and say, "Oh, can I just ask you this or that?" So you know that that's one way around it. If I do it as a workshop, then you know I always encourage people to ask questions, you know, what while you know the workshop's going on, or um, you know, I'll just stop and say any questions or. You know, I'll be around for questions at the end. So it's a lot more interactive as a workshop. But uh, as, a, as a lecture, then, you know, you can't really do that because somebody shouts from the back, you can't hear them. So uh, it's a bit, bit more difficult. But there's always a way around. And I, I love the questions afterwards. Yeah. Yeah, that's interesting. So um, we're going all over the place topic-wise today. But... <laughs> <laughs> what? About cruise ships and cruising, it sounds a bit rude. But what about cruising appeal to you over a normal holiday? Why? Why did you suddenly fall in love with cruises? Was that because you were your age and the retirement thing, or was it just something about the cruise experience that you think everybody might really enjoy? It was something about the cruise experience. When we went on our first cruise back in twenty twelve. <clears throat> Um, it was a Caribbean cruise. Yeah. So we flew to Barbados, and as soon as we got off the plane, you know, the, the warm climate met us. It's, mm. it's brilliant. And then we saw the cruise ship and thought, whoa, that is massive. <laughs> <laughs> and then, of course, that was our home for the next uh, two weeks. But... Uh, you know, obviously, we didn't live on that all the time because every day we were in a different island, different port, yeah. different climate, different surroundings, uh, and it was brilliant. So, on an ordinary holiday, you know, you, you go on holiday and you stay there by the pool, and you you know buy something to eat. On a cruise, you go somewhere different every day. And even if you do have a, an at sea day, there's so much entertainment on, like some really good uh, guest speakers, <laughs> enrichment guest speakers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, and evening time, you know, excellent entertainers. Um, and the food is all provided for you. And it's top notch food. It's like, you know, going to a, you know, a nice London expensive restaurant for every meal it's uh, and it's all included in the price that was the good thing yeah. about it so that's what made us fall in love with uh, going on cruises okay so tell us your favorite cruise or favorite cruises to go on 
Oh, I better be careful here because I've been on a few. <laughs> and the, obviously, the one that you talk on is the best line. <laughs> yeah. well, I think it's horses for courses, really, because um, probably the most interesting one that we've been on, uh, which I didn't go on as a speaker, I went on as, as, a, as a paying guest. Um, was Hertie Gruten mm. and it's a, a Norwegian one and it's it sailed right up the coast of Norway right over to the top of Norway to the Russian border and this was in March and we were looking for the northern lights yeah but not only did it go to the tourist places the, the ship also served as a like a, a service ship so it delivered mail to remote islands so we would, you know, stop at this remote island and they'd say, right, you've got 15 minutes if you want to get off and just explore. So we went to all the sorts of places that the tourist ships don't get mm. to. And it was brilliant, absolutely amazing. Um, just get off, wrap up warm, of course, explore, you know, this little village in the snow. <laughs> Superb it was. It's, um, so the Northern Lights are on my my bucket list. Sorry to interrupt you, but th those are on my bucket list, and we almost got to see them here in Darlington because they were out shining. Um, but tell it, can you describe the Northern Lights to us? What what did you see and what that looked like? And for me, it's magic. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you don't see it this way. <laughs> it was uh, probably not as as vivid as you know some people have seen them. We we did see them. But they, they made sure we did because it was the sort of cruise that guaranteed that you would see the Northern Lights or they would give you a free cruise. <laughs> oh, wow. So there was an announcement at two and three o'clock in the morning into your cabin saying the Northern Lights have appeared. <laughs> so you wrapped up warm and went out and said, yeah, there they are. So, yeah, it was uh, quite nice. You know, see the, all the, the green swirls and everything. and It was quite quite a sight to behold. So what what is the experience like being a cruise guest as opposed to being a speaker? On the, Is it a lot more stressful being a speaker? I mean, obviously, you're probably not going to be imbibing as much alcohol being a speaker, or maybe you are. I don't know. It depends how much courage you need. But um, <laughs> how has it been different being a speaker on a cruise as opposed to just being a normal guest? And are there some cruises where you really wouldn't want to be a speaker? Um, well, being um, a, a guest speaker, I, yeah. I get the s same status as an ordinary guest would rather than you know living below decks with a cruise with a yeah. crew um so you know get a, a guest cabin it's normally an inside cabin right at the front so you know all the all the uh, <laughs> the, the you feel all the waves going uh, down, yeah. you know. <clears throat> but different ships you know different things sometimes inside cabin so, some cruise ships give you a balcony cabin mm. so different different cruise ships do di different ways um, so it's it's a similar status. The only difference is that I'm expected to to do the the talks or the workshops. Um, you know, if it's a talk, you know, it's, it'll be on the sea days w once a day. If it's a workshop, sometimes twice a day on the sea days. Uh, sometimes uh, on the port days as well. Yeah. So so yeah, I, I mean some cruise ships will, um, you know, if, if you decide you, you want to drink, as long as you're, you know, you, you, you've done your, your talk for the day, you can have a drink at night, um, you know, lunchtime, would you like a drink, sir? Well, better not. I've got, <laughs> I've got a lecture coming up. So, yeah, they just expect you to uh, abide by those sort of things. Okay, I have to ask about the food. I know you touched upon it a, a little bit, but I've heard cruise ship food. Obviously, I've never been on a cruise. Tim, have you been on a cruise? No, so we're probably the worst Is... people to ask. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm I'm all about the food. Can you? 
I've heard cruise food is phenomenal and it's all you can eat. Is that, is that how it works? What do you sit with the same people all the time? These are kind of the rumors I've heard. So tell us about the food and then dinner ambiance and the lunch ambiance. Um, yeah, there's different ways that, that it, it works according to your preference. Um, and different cruise companies operate in slightly different ways. But generally, um, you can either sit with the same people at the same table at the same time um, all the time. I, 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 pre I prefer that because you get to know people, make some really good friends. Or you can do freedom dining. So it's a different restaurant and you just turn up when you like or maybe book a table in advance and sit with different people. You can have a table for two or you can share a table, meet new friends, different people every single day. So that's that's dinner normally. Uh, lunchtime, you can uh, do the same, uh, sit in the, the restaurant, which is normally freedom dining. Or you can go to the buffet. There's usually a buffet at, uh, at lunchtime. So um, you can select whatever items you, you like from the buffet. Breakfast, similar thing. You know, go in, uh, in the main dining room or, the, uh, or, or do the, um, the buffet. Okay. And, and it's varied. I, I, I love breakfast because uh, I, on a cruise, there's so much food. So I do yeah. try to eat healthily. So uh, there's loads of different sorts of fruit uh, on a uh, on a cruise at breakfast. So I, I just take loads of fruit and seeds and nuts and stuff like that. Or I could have a, a cooked breakfast, you know, a full, yeah. full English breakfast every morning. So I do try and uh, eat, eat healthily. Because it's very easy to <laughs> to pile on the pounds if uh, if you don't. Yeah. Um, so, what advice would you give somebody like me or Christelle who's never been on a cruise, maybe thinking about a cruise? What are some top tips when booking cruises? Because I know you used to, and possibly you still have a blog about cruising as well, don't you? Hmm. So, what if you're going on your first cruise? Yeah. Um, well, first of all, you can go to my website, howtocruise.co.uk. Yeah. <laughs> Loads of tips. <laughs> um, which, incidentally, I created after we'd got back from our first cruise. Because oh, okay. I knew nothing about cruising. Um, so I asked friends, kept you know, picking their brains, asked travel agents, found stuff on Google. And uh, after the cruise, I thought, you know, there was no one website dedicated to people who had never been on a cruise before. Yeah. Uh, you know, little bits here and there. So I thought, well, tell you what, I'll make one. So that's how howtocruise.co.uk was born. But if you're going on first cruise, you know, you've got to decide where you want to go. Yeah. If you like somewhere scenic, the fjords, uh, if you like somewhere nice and warm and wake up to a different place every day, I'd say the Caribbean. And then, of course, there's the Mediterranean. So, you know, decide where you want to go. What sort of ship? Do you want a family mm. ship? Do you want to dress up every single night? Um, you know, you, you know, dinner jacket and, you, mm. you know, black and white and all that. Uh, or do you want a more relaxed ship? So different ships, different uh, ways of doing it. Some are just informal dress all the time. So it depends what you want. Different different costs, different you know price range, different ways of doing it. Some ships are all the food is included, but you've got to pay for drinks. Yeah. Some ships you everything is all in but obviously they charge more yeah uh they even give you a chauffeur to drive you down to the port mm -hmm. <laughs> so it depends what you're after you know that's that's amazing okay so we need to start looking at our, our next our next vacation is a cruise 
I, <laughs> uh, I want to get into you do tech it easy workshops in your hometown. Hmm. Tell us about that. You you actually do some tech it easy um, workshops. You teach people near you. I don't know if they come in from out of town, but um, tell us about your tech it easy workshops that you do a little bit. Right. Well, they they, they I uh, started those off. Um, after I'd taken early retirement, I uh, I thought there's a lot of people think technology has left them behind mm. uh, and think, I don't do technology. I don't understand it. So I wanted to address that. And uh, so after I'd taken early retirement, I, I thought, OK, it'd be great to set up a community group purely for those sort of people. So, uh, so that's what I did. And so once a month, we we run that and uh, it, it's just to pick a different topic and sometimes i'll say to people okay what do you want to do next month and they'll say oh i, I want to learn about such a thing social media or or you know um how to beat the scammers and st stuff like that so uh, so that's what i do there's also um there's a community uh, grocery which is in association with our local church and that offers life skills life free life skill courses to to people uh, so I've offered to do um, a four week uh, tech it easy session uh, or series um, for, for, for them so we did one a few months ago and we're in the middle of uh, another one at the moment so we've done uh, WhatsApp tips and tricks, uh, how to roam with your phone without racking up huge bills when you're abroad. Uh, this this week we, we are doing happiness without the H, <laughs> all about useful apps, yeah. um, practical apps. You know, like when you park your car and you think, where did I park? Mm -hmm. Well, there's an app to find your car when you've left it. And when you're visiting a strange new town and you think, I'd like to find some uh, some restrooms. <laughs> I'd like to find the public toilets. Where are <laughs> they? Well, it's even an app that will tell you where the nearest toilets are. So those sort of things, useful um, uh, useful apps that uh, that we can use every day. David, that bathroom app, I didn't know that existed. And I was thinking about actually starting my own. This is needed. This is needed for people who travel. <laughs> yeah. No, there is there is an app, isn't there? Well, no, there is because David just said that. But I thought, <laughs> it was like, uh, yeah, I don't think I think it's more people need a restroom or toilet rather than wanting. To uh, just, oh, let's visit a local toilet. <laughs> <laughs> but do they rate the bathrooms? Because Yeah, they do. They re okay, that's what yeah. that's also needed. <laughs> yeah. in, some, in some countries, whether you can sit down or not is uh, <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, the, the, that particular app is called Where is Public Toilet? Oh, okay, and and it's only available for Android. There's an equivalent for oh. Apple, which is called Flush. <laughs> oh, okay. yeah, I'm sure I heard of a different app, but this is one of the things. Yeah, there's, there's quite a few. Well, the, the hundreds... worst public toilet yeah. has, has got 280,000 toilets worldwide. Mm. Yeah. And uh, it, in the in the presentation, I've got a slide when we were in, um, I forgot where it was now, some, some foreign country. And I needed to find a toilet. Hmm. So, so I used it, and I've got I've got a screenshot of it, <laughs> and I said, just to prove it, here's the toilet, one of those huge, yeah. um, you know, po uh, portable toilets in the yeah. middle of the street. <laughs> so it's very good, actually. It's it's that's valuable. I need to download that one. So <laughs> yeah. that's a good that's a good tip we learned here. <laughs> so, what would you say is the biggest issue that older people especially have with tech that you address is it using whatsapp is it avoiding scams or is it just something more general or more basic than that the the most popular presentation of them all is beat the scammers because yeah. <laughs> everyone has, yeah. has you know all they've had some sort of scam 
people have tried to scam us. Um, so beat the scammers is always popular. Um, get you know the most feedback from that one. So the, we just look at the the sorts of scams that are going around and how to identify them. And usually people say, "Yeah, I've had that one." And yeah. Um, so how to identify them, even how to get your own back on a, a scammer. <laughs> So, you know, lots of different uh, uh, different ways, different scams, whether it's, um, you know, fake emails or WhatsApp messages or phone calls, all the different different scams and how to uh, avoid being scammed and measures that people can take as well to make themselves a little more safe. What what can we do to make ourselves more safe from this? I mean, right now I just block everyone. Is there something else that we can be doing? Um, probably one of the things is you know if we're using free Wi-Fi in a in a cafe or an airport, is uh, use a VPN. And I usually say that use a VPN, and people say, "What's a VPN?" <laughs> Or, or I say it for them, David. You promised you wouldn't use any gobbledygook. What <laughs> is a VPN? Yeah. So then I explain it's a virtual private network and what it does that it encrypts our uh, our data end to end. So that little scammer sat in the corner trying to intercept your 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 information when you type in your passwords, so he can't see it. So. Those sort of thing. That that's the way I uh, I go about it. Ah, uh, okay. I yeah. need to learn that one too. Yeah, well, you can buy the. They're always on special offer VPNs. There's always cash back and stuff like yeah. I use Express VPN mainly actually for avoiding Disney Plus um, location <laughs> detection rather than uh, in airports. So I do occasionally use it in airports because you with a VPN, you can pretend to be from somewhere else in the world. Um, mm. so that's it, 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 it roots everything as if you're from somewhere else. Um, and okay. that stops a lot of scams and things. Um, mm. but you, you do have to pay, but it's kind of like usually nine, nine in nine, a month or something ridiculous how do you do that what do you do you have to download something or how do you yeah yeah you uh, well i'll let david say because he's the expert <laughs> david how yeah. do you do this <laughs> it, it's it's um it's it's an app just you yeah. know if you use it on your phone just download a vpn app so you go into your favorite app store whether it's your android your google play store or your apple store and search for vpn and you'll find dozens and dozens yeah. and dozens. And uh, so on the presentation, you know, I've got it just going down, scrolling down and thinking, well, this is confusing. So I said, well, the thing is, what you can do is choose this one, Proton. Proton VPN is totally free. Mm -hmm. uh, you can upgrade it. You, know, you yeah. can pay for you know, some bells and whistles and all that. But Proton VPN is totally free. So, uh, you know, I just tell them about that one and a couple others and say, you know, pick whatever you uh, whatever you prefer. But Proton is, uh, is free and easy to use. Switch it on when you're in a free, free Wi-Fi cafe or wherever. Yeah. When you get home, switch it off. Okay. And, is it, is it uh, international? Yes. You okay. use it anywhere in the world. Mm. Okay, interesting. So, can it run? You can. This r app will run while you're on other apps. Uh, yes. Yeah. Well, yeah as around. long as you're connected to the internet. Okay. Um, you know, if it's you know connected to the internet, free you know free Wi-Fi, you switch it on to protect yourself, and um, it, it just protects you. Okay. when you're connected to the internet so you can be running anything else at the same time okay um, with, with, with proton the free version it will it will only connect to the service in three countries mm. so you know you can upgrade to connect to more okay but, but uh yeah it does the job keeps you safe yeah. okay on that note um how can people find out more about 
uh, your Tech It Easy stuff, your cruise uh, blog. Uh, I Somebody from a cruise liner is watching this and thinks, or cruise cruise service, I suppose, what was the cruise company sees this and wants to hire you as a cruise ship enrichment guest speaker. Um, how can they do that? So basically, how can people find out about everything you do? That's more or less what I'm trying to ask. <laughs> All right. Well, um, my Tech It Easy stuff is, the website is techiteasyworkshop.co.uk or just yeah. Google Tech It Easy and you'll find techiteasyworkshop.co.uk. Um if you want to find me uh, as a guest speaker, I'm registered with Peel um, Peel Talent, which is a you know an agent for uh, cruise guest speakers, mm -hmm. and also the Cruise Enrichment Network. Um, so you know that, that's that's another one. So you can find me on just Google my name, and yeah. you know I'll I'll appear on the one of the places I'll appear is the Cruise Enrichment Network. So, so a bit like Beetlejuice, then I just say David Wimbledon, David Wimbledon. <laughs> 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 yeah. And if you want to find out a bit about me, it's davidwithington.com. <laughs> and and you are amazing at puns on Twitter and Facebook. <laughs> um what well, it's well, you, you're something like the abacus on Twitter, aren't you, or something like that? Abacus. 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 Yeah. yeah. Uh, the, the reason for that, Tim, is when when I first joined Twitter, it's like everything else. You, you, you think, oh, I've got a, a username, and somebody else has already taken it. Yeah. So I thought every, every username I've tried, sorry, taken. So I opened the dictionary. And I looked <laughs> for the first word that I could find that began with a vowel. Oh, so yeah. Abacus. And I thought, well, in the northwest of England, we don't say the abacus. We say Thabacus. Oh. So that, that became my username, Thabacus. Thabacus. <laughs> so it's a play on words. And if people yeah. say, why Thabacus? Why the abacus? I tell them, well, because you can count on me. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like some sort of Roman centurion, actually. <laughs> I love it, David. Thank you so much. I learned things I didn't know, especially about the VPN. I need to download that app ASAP. So I learned something, and I'm excited to look into cruises. Thank you for being with us. This was amazing, Tim. Thank you for bringing uh, David on. Yes, it's like I managed to find him at a conference when he was on a cruise once, uh, and then I pestered him in the corner and said, "You're coming on the show," and he was like, "No, I was like, you're coming on the show," and he's like, "Okay." <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, the rest is history. <laughs> Thanks so much for being the guest on the show today, David. And I'm going to play the titles once everybody's had a chance to say goodbye and thank you. Goodbye. So you, you, you quickly. <laughs> thank you very much for inviting me. I thoroughly enjoyed it. And I do apologize for, for cancelling twice when I was on the cruises. Oh, don't worry about that. Yeah. <laughs> but right. uh, really, I really appreciate that. Thanks for inviting me. Yeah. Thank thoroughly you. Thoroughly enjoyed it. Bye, you. everyone. Bye. We'll see you next week or the week after. Yeah. This is what God requires.